from the Orpington congregation. Today's passage is the story of the fall of man, how Eve chose to be deceived by the devil into eating the forbidden fruit, how Adam just stood by and the consequences of those choices. Every single day we all make choices both large and small. It may be a decision about what exam subjects or university course we should take, where we should live, what job we should do, who we should marry and so on. It may be simply what we should wear, what we eat, who we see or talk to, where we go and what we do. Or it might be a choice to tell a lie or to tell the truth, to be cruel or to be kind, to do the popular thing or to do the right thing. Of course, the greatest decision any of us will make is the decision to follow Christ. Our attitude towards God and our relationship with him will or should determine all the choices we make. Going back to our passage, the serpent asks the question, did God really say? And Eve made the choice to doubt God's word. Faith in God's word must be personal. We will all be influenced by what we read and hear and see. But the bottom line is that we need a knowledge of God's word that is personal to us. We need to spend time in his word and listen to what he has to say to us and grow in our confidence in its truth and in God's character. Eve also made the choice to be dissatisfied with God's will. Satan focused her attention on the one thing she could not have. She and Adam had everything else in abundance and it was a test of their acceptance of and obedience to God's will. It may be that we feel dissatisfied with our own situation at the moment, probably more the case during this pandemic than normal. Isaiah 48 says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you what is best for you. When we have confidence in God's word, we know that he always has our best interests at heart, even if his way of doing things might not necessarily be our preference. There was also a choice here to deny the goodness of God. Dr. Larry Crabb, a psychologist, defines sin as our effort to supplement what we think are limits to God's goodness. It is trusting ourself instead of trusting God. Satan tried to persuade Eve that God didn't want her to enjoy life to the full when he said, God knows that when you eat the fruit, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. For ourselves, we may sometimes feel we are missing out and we can toy with what seems like a little temptation, but the more we toy with the idea, the closer we get to actually doing it. Those three choices, to doubt God's word, to be dissatisfied with his will, and to deny his goodness, led to yet another choice, which was to disobey. Although I've majored on Eve thus far, we should remember that she gave some of that fruit to Adam, who, verse 6 tells us, was with her. His choice was to stand by, knowing full well what was going on, and yet do nothing. Perhaps the part of the story that speaks to me most is that although Adam and Eve were now full of shame and guilt, so much so that they hid themselves, God sought them out. Verse 9 tells us, but the Lord called to the man, where are you? The initiative to restore the fellowship was God's. Incredibly, even at this stage, Adam and Eve both tried to pass the blame, Adam to Eve and Eve to the serpent. It's all too easy, isn't it, for us to find someone or something to blame for our behaviour. I can only scratch the surface of this passage in such a short time, but the exciting part I want to leave you with is the fact that when God passed judgment on them, in particular verse 15, he was already indicating that he would provide a way for our salvation through his son Jesus. Although Jesus' heel would be bruised by Satan on the cross, his death was temporary. On the third day, he rose victorious from the dead, crushing the head of the devil and destroying his power forever. So no matter what bad or wrong choices we make today, next week or in the years to come, we know that if we confess those things, then in Jesus we can know total forgiveness, that our fellowship with our Heavenly Father can remain unbroken. 
and that we can look forward to a glorious eternity with him. Hallelujah. I love the way, too, that God shows such kindness when he made garments for Adam and Eve. Isaiah 61 says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and wrapped me in a robe of righteousness. That's how much God loves you and me today. So let's take time to rejoice in those truths and live in the joy of them making wise choices as we do. Have a blessed day.